Okay, so now to finish it off, instead of bringing in more cloud reference, I'm going to use maybe one cloud reference and a lot of clone stamping. So it might even be one that I've used before, but to show you how versatile these clouds are, I'm going to give myself one just to clone stamp with and to do kind of texture overlays with. So copy it. Come on. There we go. I'm going to get rid of these extra layers I don't need. So it can all move kind of cleanly. I'm going to move this on top of everything. I'm going to get rid of the blue. I'm going to soften the edge with the selected mask. So this is kind of my reference cloud but I do need to get rid of the blue first because I don't want to copy blue onto my image. I want all the blue to come from my gradient layer behind. Come on, you were working so beautifully before. Now you're taking forever. All right, so I have the selection and I just hit delete. Uh, I might hit delete again to soften it a little bit more. You can see that slightly soft edge. Very good. So this is my cloud cutout. I can use color balance. I know it's all very repetitive, but it's all very important. With the midtones to get it to match a little bit. I can use levels to get the brightness and contrast to match a little bit. And actually, I just want to limit the highlights. There we go. So that's all I need. So now this cloud could be another cloud in the sky, right? That kind of fits along with mine. My creature might be coming out of this cloud. So what I want is to think of this as a sculpture made of cotton balls to look like a cloud. This is my bag of cotton balls. And my next trick is is going to be using these textures, the ones I already have and the ones I've added down here, to paint in the other shapes I need. Something to suggest the, the talons, the tail. I've got a really kind of blurry but not um, varied enough shape there. Also, that low opacity, that edge isn't paying off for me the way I want it to. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to use Clone Stamp. And I'm going to turn off my sky layers. Then what I'm going to do is make a new layer on top that I mark red. And I label this my clone stamp layer, just like we did for assignment two when we were finishing things off. I don't like to do clone stamp on individual layers because I don't like to change pixels if I don't have to. Right? By doing it on top of everything, that means I'm adding pixels on top as a new resource. So when I use the clone stamp tool, as Photoshop says, it paints with pixels from another part of the image. But I can set it whether it's only stealing from the current layer or from the current layer and below or from all layers. So if I just say current and below, and I make sure this one's on top, and I paint with an 80% opacity or 63% opacity with a pressure sensitive brush for size, at a pretty soft <laughs> hardness, pretty large. Now I can actually use option to target cloud somewhere, like say from the top here, and paint it in somewhere else where I think I need it. And I can hit option and I can move it. 
So it's a little hard to see whoops, without the sky behind it because we're dealing with softness and transparency. But as soon as I turn that sky back on, you can see what the clone stamp layer does. So I'm painting with cloud. Now you can try it with the background on, but you just want to be careful not to clone from the background. Now remember it's safe, it's all on its own layer, a layer that can be erased from and worked with. And I can take it at even lower opacities. So if I take this shadow and I kind of blend it into the shadows I already have and use it to kind of mask my talons a little bit. So building with cloud. Okay, now for the tail, I don't want any of that to be in pretty, in a, in sharp focus, but I need a little bit of textural variety. I don't want it to be quite as colorful as I have it. So I don't want any bright highlights, but I want some of this texture in there. And I want it to be broken up. So that is helpful. So I'm painting with, or I'm using clone stamp at only 18% opacity. So look at the dangers of painting with blue, right? Very dangerous. Highly, highly irregular. All right, this is gonna do it. Now, I want you all to play with it because clone stamp is a tricky tool but it's so helpful once you get used to it. But like any tool, if you rely on it too much, it starts to um, be more of a crutch. And it can limit the effectiveness. Right? The other thing that's scary about Clone Tool is it will carry hard edges over too. So that's why you want to refine your cloud quite a bit and really erase away a lot of those hard edges before you use it. Okay, so now, now I've got a lot of that extra clone stamping texture on there. Let me turn off that reference cloud, right? Or better yet, let me just use that reference cloud as a texture overlay. So what do I mean by that? Well, some of you, let's say I just did a perfect copy of my creature as a cloud, it just doesn't make a lot of sense as a cloud because it's just kind of there all by its on its own. So what if I take another cloud reference, I take its opacity down and I push it behind. Right? Sometimes that kind of and I'll use the smudge tool. Sometimes that kind of um kind of misty context can help a lot. I'll use the smudge tool really big here. Photoshop will love catching up and processing this. Push it back and forth a little bit. And then I'll erase away from it. And then I'm just going to make some final touches to my clone stamp layer, like erase away from it. Come on. See, I told you the smudge tool takes a while. <laughs> That's why I saved it right before. And so saving and smudging. It's good to be patient. Mindfulness. It's a good time to just quiet your mind. Breathe. Put yourself in your body. Listen for the furthest away sound. Never. Never? Not once you just kind of like, 
You can look at those beautiful little gray flickering dots of the pinwheel of death. Just think, it all ends. Someday, got to enjoy the moments we have. If I knew I were to die in five years, would I be doing the same exact thing this moment? Just thinking, just thinking. These are opportunities for contemplation. Yes. All right. Frustrating as they may be. So when this happens, <laughs> um, if you are feeling impatient, you can go down to your dock and you can right click on the Photoshop icon and see if it says application not responding. Uh, if it does, it's usually a bad thing. And it means you have overtaxed the system by smudging too much. <laughs> but that is why we save. All right, so let's see. Come on, come back to me. So if you need to, you can say force quit. and then restart from where you last saved. And I'm gonna try that, see how that works. And I'm leaving this all in the video, because this is a common experience with digital artists. <laughs> Just like when you're oil painting, sometimes the fumes make you pass out. <laughs> and you, you lose what you were doing for the last half hour. Exact same thing. So you're supposed to wear a res respirator when you oil paint. But as soon as I learned that, I stopped oil painting. That's a good question. So why is it always Adobe that's crashing? It's not because Adobe's bad, it's because Adobe's greedy. So Adobe programs think your computer is made only for them. And so like the newest video games being developed. I think it's Ninja Gaiden will only ever develop a game. They're called the Ninja Team that makes that game. They only ever develop it for the newest cutting edge system. And their goal is to use every bit of processing power. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of what Adobe Photoshop does. And they've added so many features that are not necessarily all that useful to everybody but they eat up a whole lot of memory. So what does restarting it do? Restarting it uh, obviously cancels any actions that it got hung up on, like that, that smudge. Why did that smudge slow down everything? It's because I smudged with a big brush, which would have been great, but it's probably better just to transform it instead or warp it in terms of processing power. Now, if I didn't have other programs open, I tend to have a lot of other programs open. If I were only doing my digital art job and not my other teaching jobs and, my, um, and have those other uh, windows open, then it wouldn't have as much of a problem. But look, because I saved, I still have my clone stamp layer. I still have everything before I smudged. So that is the lesson. Save when things start to lag so that you don't lose a lot of progress. All right, let's finish this thing up. So I like that little misty context. Call it portable context. Maybe I'll move it up a little bit with the move tool. And now I'll start erasing away, editing. In writing, they say, kill your darlings. Like, give yourself something to react to. I'm not gonna go that far, but I'm gonna say definitely, a good piece doesn't keep everything. <laughs> so start taking away. Leave little bits and fragments. Don't be afraid of getting rid. And what I love about erasing as a compositing tool is if you're erasing with a soft eraser and I'm at 0% hardness, there is no chance that you're adding in hard edges. Right? 
the goal is to get rid of hard edges. And I have more than five.